Welcome everyone, I greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and it is time once again for the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional, and today's topic is titled, The Supper of the Great God. Saturday, May 18th is today's date, and it is 2019, we are rolling through the month of May. All right, so again, the title of this is The Supper of the Great God. And it says here in Revelation 19:17b, Come and gather yourselves together unto the Supper of the Great God. Revelation 19:17b. And the author that uh, author, authored this little devotional today, his uh, name is, let's go, G GT, which is short for, uh, let's see, where are we at here? Uh, Gary Trout, pastor of Bell Point Baptist Church in H uh, Hinton, West Virginia. Hinton, West Virginia. Amen. All right, so let's get into the topic here. It says here there are two suppers mentioned in Revelation 19. First is the marriage supper of the Lamb, found in verse 9. And blessed are they that are called to that supper. Amen. But cursed are those who are called to the great supper of God, found in verse 17. God says that the birds of the air will flock together at this great supper of the great God. The following verse explains why they gathered. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men. Verse 18. So let's read these two suppers here. Go ahead and read these suppers. Alright, so Revelation 19. Let's go to Revelation 19 and read some scripture. Amen. So let's get started in the scripture. So Revelation 19, verse 9 says, uh, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Amen. And then 17, verse 17, says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. And then we just read uh, verse 18. We'll read that again. It says, That ye may... Eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men. Verse 18. So, that was verse 9, 17, and 18. And now we continue on where it says, Every believer fights against three great enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah, that's the three enemies that we have, the world, the flesh, and the devil. A lot of people think that every problem a Christian has originates with the devil. That's absolutely not right because the devil can only be in one place at one time. It's our flesh that we deal with every single day. Our flesh is our greatest enemy because the devil, he may throw the snares out there and have his minions and his uh, workers out there throwing snares out for us, but uh, it's our flesh that is our greatest enemy. Because again, the devil can only be in one spot at one time, and he's. Uh, and you may think, well, he's bugging me. Well, you want to know it's bugging you? You're bugging you. <laughs> I'm bugging me. Our flesh bugs us. Our flesh gets the best of us. It's this wicked flesh. This flesh. All the devil can do is throw out snares, and he knows exactly what temptations that we deal with and our weaknesses. And so he never throws anything new at us. And the world never throws anything new at us, and our flesh never throws anything new at us. It's always the same, same old temptations, right? So, again, uh, a lot of people think that every problem a Christian has originates with the devil. They want to blame everything on him, but they don't want to blame anything on themselves, you know? We always want to point the finger at somebody else, whether it be the devil whether it be your friends, your family, but you don't point your finger back at yourself. Realize it's your own fault because you're still living in this wicked body of flesh. Even though your soul might be saved, your body of flesh is not saved. And you need to stop letting that body of flesh rule and reign over you. Yeah. 
same goes with me. I'm preaching to myself too. Just as much as I'm preaching to everybody else out there. So it goes with every single one of us. Alright. So, they want to blame everything on him. Now, he says, I certainly don't mean to minimize the power of Satan, right? But he is only one formidable foe that folk face. Because... He may tempt you, but he cannot force you into that temptation, because it says the devil may, so he can't force you into doing it. It's, it's your own decision whether you want to fall into it or not. It's my own decision if I want to fall into it or not, so there you go. We face a battle with, with three, and this of the revelation gets rid of all three, so we face a battle with three and this of the revelation gets rid of all three in chapter 18 god gets rid of the world represented by babylon in chapter 20 the lord is going to get rid of the devil by casting him into hell actually the lake of fire and in chapter 19 he gets rid of the flesh one day the birds will come and feast on the flesh satan will be cast and chained forever and this old world will be gone, and a new heaven, earth, and city will be the home of the redeemed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go ahead and read that. Uh, right here in chapter 21, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's talking about anyone that's lost, because if you're saved, you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So this is talking about uh, people that are still lost, and what's going to happen to them. So if you're still lost, friend, I encourage you to come to Jesus today so you can be saved and be with him in heavenly places. So, again, uh, this verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials uh, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and a, had a, great, a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the tw uh, gates twelve angels, and names were written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. So we're talking about uh, the city and all this stuff. And so you can go and finish reading that. Amen. And uh, so there you have it. That is Revelation 21, talking about the new heavens and the new earth and, and going down through the verses. So, hallelujah. We will be going home 
to be with the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ. If you are saved, that is. If you're lost, I hope and pray you'll come to Jesus today so you can be saved and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's by, uh, it's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so that was the Supper of the Great God. And now let us get into our reading, the morning reading. I know it's afternoon time right now, but the morning reading was from John 6, 1 through 21. So let us get into John chapter 6. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 6 and verses 1 through 21. And it says here, after these things. So after these things, let's see, uh, what was he talking about? How he's um, talking about all the stuff that happened in chapter 5. Amen. So after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were uh, diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And he, this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. So, <laughs> unbelief there, seems like. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And here Jesus uh, says, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. So we can apply this to how Jesus uh, saves us and gives us the gospel, and then we are to go distribute that gospel, that bread of God, out to the world, so they have a chance to be saved. Amen. When they were filled, he saith, said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. So this is of, of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Right, because Jesus didn't come to set up a kingdom the first time. He'd come to die for our sins the first time around. So he wasn't looking to be a uh, king yet. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum, and it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land, whither they went. Amen. That word immediately. Did a little study on that a while back. Uh, the word immediately. I uh, should go over that uh, here one of these days. And show you all the times immediately is in the Bible. And how when Jesus heals somebody, it's immediate. So when he gives us salvation and saves our soul, it's immediately. It doesn't happen. It's not a process. It's immediate. Amen. So... As soon as you trust Jesus Christ, boom, you're saved. Amen. But it, it's a, a lifetime thing after that to learn to live for him and be more Christ-like until we get to heavenly places with Christ. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. It happens immediately. 
Well, that will be the end of our devotional and then our Bible reading. So that was John 6, 1 through 21. And the evening reading is from 1 Chronicles 4, 5, and 6. I don't know if I gave you yesterday's. Yesterday's, of course, is uh, 1 Chronicles 1, 1 through 3. And I apologize if I didn't give that to you yesterday. So sometimes I rush out of here a little bit too quickly and forget to give you the evening readings. So that will be yesterday's uh, and today's. So you can read 1 Chronicles 1 through 6 on your personal time or wherever you're at in your Bible reading. I encourage you to get in your Bible and read it and study it and learn it and get into a good Bible-believing church and learn God's Word and get under some good Bible preaching and teaching. Amen. And uh, if you're interested in going to the church website, it's www.jameswnox.org or you can find all the sermons on the church YouTube channel, which is uh, Bible Baptist Church YouTube channel. Amen. Or you can go to Facebook or Periscope if you have one of those uh, um, platforms. Amen. So there's lots of ways to get out there and search for God's Word and good truth and good Bible preaching and teaching. But beware of, of those that uh, might teach false things. I mean, you're supposed to uh, take the meat and spit out the bones type of thing. So... There might be things that certain people teach that are not correct, so make sure you study that out for yourself. If you hear something that sounds a little crazy and you're not too sure about it, it's good to get in the Bible and see it for yourself and read it and study it. Amen. So those are some places you can go to find good Bible preaching and teaching. Amen. All right, well, I will wrap it up for today. And before I go, let me tell you, if you are not saved, it is only through Jesus Christ who can save you from your sin, because the Bible says, He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And I hope you'll trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today. All right, well, tomorrow's topic will be life from God, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon to give you that devotional. Amen. So thank you again for watching, and... May the Lord richly bless you, and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. Amen. Bye-bye for now.